Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. I'm gonna show you how you can use RoboFlow's dataset health check to get the most out of your computer vision datasets. Now, for today's example, we're gonna be walking through the hard hat workers dataset. If you wanna follow along, you can actually find this dataset on public.roboflow.ai. So if we go to public.roboflow.ai, I'm presented with all these free public image datasets, and there's the hard hat workers dataset. I already have this data set in my account and I've pulled up the hard hat workers data set health check. Let's dive on in. First things first, I have 7,035 images in my data set. I don't have any missing annotations, meaning all of my image files have a matching annotation file. I also don't have any null examples, zero null example. A null example is when I have an image that doesn't contain any of the objects that I want to detect in that given image. So for example, I don't have an image of a construction site that doesn't contain a worker, a person, or someone that doesn't have a hard hat on. I have 27,039 annotations across my 7,000 images, or approximately 3.8 per image. That's good. I mean, it's pretty good feature richness across my three classes. I also generally have pretty small images, 0.17 megapixels. My smallest one is 0.03 megapixels. My largest is 0.67. I can actually click on that if I want to see this itty bitty small image and see its dimensions inside my data set. And here I see this, uh, this image here that's 167 by 154, uh, which, is, which is helpful. Okay, now um, my class balance. So having balanced classes is important in computer vision because we want our model to learn evenly across different objects that we want to teach it to recognize. In this data set, I might have some problems. I have a pretty good representation of helmets, 19,747 helmet examples. Um, I have about 6,600 some examples of heads, people without helmets, but I only have 615 examples of persons, meaning people that don't have a helmet or a um, uh, or just their face instead. Now I can zoom in and see, show me RoboFlow, show me in my data set, every single image that contains a person. Remember, there are 615 annotated people, but that doesn't mean that there's 615 images of people. Why? Because there could be multiple people in a single image. And in fact, that's what we see here. There's 209 images, but a lot of these images have multiple people annotated. Like this one, or actually this is a really good example here where I have all these people uh, annotated and then the hard hat around those people as well. Okay, now back to my health check. So I also have here the size information. Me, size matters because it helps inform the resize decision I wanna make. If I resize my images to square, as most models require, are my models gonna be, or are my images gonna be stretched down or stretched up? It kinda depends. In this data set, it looks like my median average size is 500 by 333, so I might not wanna go much bigger than 333. Most of the time, you know, we resize anywhere between 300 by 300 to 640 by 640 or somewhere in between, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. It all depends, of course, on the context of your problem. But I wouldn't want to go much bigger than 333 pixels here for the uh, the height because that would stretch out my pixels more than I want. Um, the width is generally 500 pixels wide, so maybe a good resize decision would be 300 by 300, perhaps. Uh, kind of depends again on the context of your problem. I also see that the aspect ratio here. A lot of my images are wider than they are square. In fact, you see here I have this line here where it goes directly across. If an image is just as tall as it is wide, that means it is a perfect square. If it's wider than it is tall, then it's a wide image. And if it's taller than it is wide, then it's a tall image. I could have images that are very tall or very wide, meaning if I stretch things to be square, it might mess up their aspect ratio. But conversely, if I could preserve the aspect ratio, it might create a lot of white or black padding in my resized decision. RoboFlow shows me those previews and my pre-processing steps if I wanted to have a look. So this is all useful information to inform my resized decision in particular. Now, I also have the annotation heat map to understand generally in my image, where are my objects appearing? The helmets are generally across the top of my image. The heads also generally across the top and persons are actually emanating from the bottom of my images. That kind of makes sense, right? So this is like a gut check. Are my objects generally where I expect them to be across my images? And if I were to make a resize decision or crop or change the size of my objects, would they be in positions where they're in the frame of my image? This helps make sure that you have a very visual quick check without manually combing through, surfacing all these individual annotations in a quick one-stop way. So 
that's kind of an overview of the things that are available to you in your health check. Now, be sure to like and subscribe to the RoboFlow channel to learn more computer vision tips. We cannot wait to see what you build using RoboFlow to incorporate computer vision into your problems. Thanks so much for watching.